Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Top 10 Blue Bulls and we feature Top 10 Hot Topics, News Updates about celebrities, events, education, information and many more. I would kindly like to encourage you to please subscribe to this channel for more content updates. Please give a thumbs up to this video if you like it. I would appreciate and please don't forget to share your views in the comment section below. The entire global community is now facing an unprecedented triple crisis for global health pandemic. The economic recession and global financial meltdown has never been so devastating and the fates of rich and poor countries have never been so intertwined. And this is an opportunity for all countries to come together and work together as one. In today's video, I'm gonna look at some of the challenges or factors that are most likely to impede or hamper the efforts to fight the spread of this pandemic, the coronavirus, in Africa and many other third world countries. Welcome aboard. Number one is weak economies. Most developing countries have strained economies. The entire global community is now facing a massive economic recession and depressions and the diabolical global financial meltdown. The fates of rich and poor countries have never been so interconnected. Commodity prices are collapsing, international trade is slowing and many developing countries that were already in distress are on the edge of full-blown sovereign debt crisis. But while the rich countries like the US and those in Europe can afford to spend hundreds of billions or trillions of dollars on massive bailouts, developing and emerging nations like El Salvador, Lebanon, Sierra Leone, Yemen and Myanmar are much less able to rescue their own economies. Many development experts are of the view that it's imperative that the richest countries find ways to show up their poorer counterparts. Nevertheless, Due to this factor, these countries are likely to develop a lot of strains in a bid to combat this menace. Number two is laxity to abide by the rules. The numbers might be low in these regions, and people's total disregard of these rules is likely to trigger this pandemic even further. People still go to drinking behind closed doors, still operating underground, going to their cultural practices in total disregard of the social distancing rules. Still rife is the misconceptions as some people still believe that this is a disease that only affects certain regions or racial groups or certain religious affiliations. Hand washing is still not practiced as often as it should be and therefore it's likely to be a challenge in a bit to beat threshold of total hygiene. There still needs to be high sensitization by governments to ensure people follow these rules to the latter for their own good. The third reason is poverty. More than half of total populations in most of these countries still live under less than a dollar a day. Most live on hand to mouth. The rich on the other hand, for example, can afford to make bulk buying and stay at home while the poor majority have to go out and eke out a living but at least survive for an extra day on a daily basis which exposes them to danger even more. Most live under squalid conditions in crowded shanties, making social distancing a challenge as well. Another great challenge to these countries is that the, with the already weak economies, most of them tend to have weak medical systems and infrastructures and this is a major concern. The COVID-19 pandemic has overwhelmed health systems in Europe and North America. The US, France, Italy, Spain and the UK have all experienced shortages of doctors, ventilators, personnel, protective equipment and testing capacity. But it's going to be even worse in poor countries where medical resources are scarce. Many of these countries lack enough hospitals, skilled personnel or reagents and inability therefore to do a mass testing for example. Most developing countries do not have enough hospitals capacities which could prove to be a disaster for these countries. Currently, 
The rich countries are the epicenter of this deadly virus, and in some cases, some nurses have been told to choose who of the patients to let die and who to save. Some of the elderly have been abandoned dead in their beds, and yet that is in a country in which we have a doctor for every 250 people. Now consider a country like Zambia, which has one doctor for 10,000 people. In Mali, there are three ventilators per a million people. Coronavirus has threatened us all, and it plays through the colossal cracks that divides our world and makes us all less safe as a result. My fifth reason is population pressure. Countries with high population significantly have majority of their people being the poorest. Many third world countries tend to have higher birth rates but with meager resources to cater for the huge population. A pandemic like this one can end up becoming a disaster if not properly managed. Countries in this category like Nigeria, Egypt, Ethiopia, or even Brazil and Indonesia can experience greater challenges in handling their logistics than for example Rwanda or Botswana. It's quite easy with the low population coupled with an organized statistics of your population. Countries that tend to have proper planning are likely to have less challenges in maneuvering around. Larger developed countries like the US and China tend to have an advantage because of their higher GDPs and therefore ability to cut off for their people in times of need. As opposed to a country with a high population of poor people, this can become a challenge. These are people who are most, most likely hungry and therefore likely to be angry. Which brings me to factor number six. Factor number six, which is political instability. With political, with economic instability comes political instability in most cases. Countries like Venezuela, Somalia, Yemen, Libya, Mali, Syria, for example, have monumental challenges to keep their population stationed in one place or the other because of commotions moving up and down. Political instability is a multi-edged sword and hence can be a big setback to this pandemic fight. When civilians are unsettled, they are not likely to abide by the basic rules like social distancing. Curfew is hard to maintain, especially for refugees who stay in camps. Some stay in squalid conditions. Some of these countries already face shortages in terms of food security, medical supplies and broken infrastructure and therefore crises like these can always worsen the situation if not a disaster. Factor number 7 is somehow interesting due to the fact that it has now come to a point where it's everyone for himself and God for us all. Developed countries are worst affected and therefore developing countries are quite vulnerable due to the fact that they have not to run to. At the moment, it's everybody for himself, literally. Especially with the fact that the Western world is still the epicenter. Africa and other developing countries can't expect much attention from the world bodies. Especially with the fact that the US has decided to cancel its funding WHO. Considering the top contributors to the world body, there are high chances it is likely to impact negatively on its operation, especially ability to help the vulnerable. Reason number eight is corruption. Corruption in the borders, corruption in the country is a strong factor that can really impede this war. There have been cases where some government officials have been accused of soliciting for bribes so that they can let people travel from one side of the country to another or across the borders, regardless of their status. These unpatriotic officials have had the guards to ask for bribes oblivious of the fact that they are endangering the lives of their fellow countrymen. So sad to say the least. And if this trend continues, it is likely to be a transfer of sick persons from one area to another and hence make the spreading of the virus even more rampant, further and wider. This is a moment that needs a high sense of discipline no matter the situation. Reason number 9 is unfavorable climatic conditions which can sometimes be quite inevitable. Conditions like drought, rain floods, hurricane Katrina's, or like the other day swarms of locusts attacking some parts of East Africa. As countries struggle to fight COVID, the inevitable 
natural calamities can sometimes be a nuisance and very much an impediment in this fight. And the fact that it affects human settlements, hence causing immigration and therefore resulting in people crowded or crowding in small places. These are people already worried about the survival before they even think of the dangers the pandemic poses, especially when they don't abide by the lay down health rules. Just like the war crimes victims, these are also another group of vulnerable people that unless their governments takes drastic swift measures to help them, things can always get out of hand before they even know it. And last but not least, factor number 10. And factor number 10 is like a combination of some of the other factors. In many of these developing countries, technology is still not accessible to many people and therefore services like online or paperless money is still not accessible to many especially in the rural areas where majority lives with the fact that technology is still not completely available in, in every region of these countries especially in the rural areas paper money is still common and therefore this is a huge challenge most likely to many developing countries not everyone has access to technology and this is likely to catalyze the spread even faster among the civilians Another factor is that people still use public transport, which is quite widespread in some of these areas. Some people still board crowded buses, and with this scenario, it means that the spread to every corner of the country becomes very easy. Though some countries have made some drastic measures to stop the rampant traveling from one place to another, which is quite a positive gesture, though still a lot needs to be done. Well, many of these challenges can be faced and tackled if the world becomes together. And it's quite imperative that the vulnerable gets help. Governments should do more and take more drastic measures and together we shall overcome this seemingly insurmountable challenge. Please feel free to share your views. What kind of initiatives people need to take to win this war? Otherwise, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more juicy top 10 videos.